little loud there. <laughs> That's great. Hey, this is John Bolger with Premier Guitar. I'm here with Isaiah Mitchell from Earthless. How's it going? Doing some strat abuse psychedelic madness for us here. Thanks oh, so much for thanks, joining us. Thanks yeah. For being here. Hey, let's start with this. Your, okay. uh, your strat. What is the story on? Um, well, this guitar is a mystery. I got it off of a buddy's dad when I was in high school. Wow. For a few hundred bucks. And it's the neck is why I wanted the guitar so bad. It's just like a soft V. Um, that that was everything. Uh, he, when he had it, he had lace sensors in it, a, a humbucker in the bridge, lace sensor, graphite saddles. So I just took all, all of that stuff out and put it, put it back to stock, kind of how it should be. Wow. And, um, so it's a, it's a 50s neck, right? No one knows. I mean, it's a 50s style neck, yeah. but no one can tell me what it actually is, if it's a real 50s, like a 55 neck, or is it a, a reissue from the 80s US? Um, I don't know. No one can give me a straight <laughs> answer. There's no serial numbers. I've tried everything. Yeah. People that have refretted the guitar have said, oh, I think that's a 55 neck. A couple people have said that. So. I don't know. It might be that, but I don't want to know. Actually, yeah. I don't. I don't want to know if, what it is anymore. That's yeah. That's good. What difference does it make? It doesn't. It's matter. your guitar. When you're dead, you'll be buried with it. So <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. I want someone else to play it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, on, on the pickup side of things, right now I have a company uh, called Breerly. It's this guy Mick Breerly in uh, Australia, and he makes all his own pickups, one-stop shop. Um, no one else working for him. And I really love his pickups um, that he makes. And all my guitars have them. And then, yeah, updated the Callahan uh, tremolo system. And yeah, cool. it's just basic and useful. Yeah, well, it sounds fabulous. And, and so uh, it's so great that a guitar you bought in high school is mm. still, this is your number one, Yeah, right? yeah, totally. Cal how totally. great, man. How Excalibur, right? Yeah. No, it's for <laughs> sure. I, I buy other guitars, I play other guitars, and it's like nothing can come close. Yeah. So, you, Are yeah. you touring to the backup, or do you just... I am, actually. It's in that case right hey, let's, there. Let's, I think you got to see it. I'll hold this okay, for a second. Yeah, have fun. So this is just... Um, where are you? Just the Baja Telly. Also, I got it primarily because it has that V neck profile. Sure which I really, really like. Um, so that's, that's kind of first and foremost, as I think it is with everybody, neck first, everything else you can yeah. you know, mod out. Um, okay, and then again, Breerly pickups. They're just a little hotter wound Tele uh, style pickups. Again, the Callaham uh, saddles there. Yeah. Did, does the three saddle system work pretty well on this for you? This works pretty good. I mean, I've always known that, you know, the intonation and all, just everything with adjustments sure. um, is a little trickier with that, um, just with the, with you know, they're sharing one post each. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I've always been a Strat guy, so I'm, this is my first Tele I've ever oh, owned, cool. so I'm still getting into it. But to me, I mean, it intonates fine. It's yeah. great. You know? Is the Bigsby a bit of an adjustment? You're a real whammy bar guy. I right? love the whammy bar, and Bigsby, um, outside of restringing them, God, is a pain in the ass. But yeah, Callahan has that new, um, like, uh, string kind of stopper where it's yeah. kind of like, like a stop tail piece. Gretsch is doing that too okay. with their player's edition. Cool. So yeah, it's, it's, it's way cleaner. I need to know? get that. Yeah. But I opted out for this so they're not sliding all over the place. There's grooves. Oh, yeah. The Callahan again. Um, yeah, four way switch on it, so the top's a humbucker if you want it. And oh. Yeah, pretty much straight up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a great backup. Yeah. Hey, let's, would you mind just showing the sounds between that humbucker yeah. and the, like all four of those? Let me make sure I'm in tune here. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, we're kind of put you on the spot. No, it's all right. The grab and play. I love grab and play. <laughs> grab and eat, yeah. grab and play. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good enough for rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the in between.
humbucker. So when it's, it's a humbucker in the neck, is it running like these combined as a humbucker? Is there yeah, a hidden... yeah, oh, it's okay. those in combo. Yeah. As opposed to the the two together in kind of like that. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Yeah, like uh, what yeah. Is, I'm always bad with the terms. It's, like yeah. out, it's not quite out of phase, but it's like in parallel. Or yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. One of those. One of those things. I'm sure in the comment section, one of you nerds out Bring there on, will man. correct us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what what gauge strings do you run on these? Uh, ten gauge and pretty much all the guitars. Uh, Jim Dunlop. Okay. Just standard ten. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And you're so you you obviously this is your number one, but do you yeah. switch for songs or like string break? It's you, primarily a string break. Yeah. I'm glued to that guitar to yeah. my strat. So. Yeah. I, I I need to get another backup that's gonna be more like that. Yeah, good luck. On yeah, fighting. it's hard. It's, it's hard. <laughs> fighting wood you know? like that. Yeah, it's so cool how, I mean, again, that's a cool guitar, but I love the fact that these weird combinations that just you put together end up sounding like yeah. your own thing. Yeah, yeah, it works good. I mean, I've messed around with other pickups. Um, Aero pickups, mm -hmm. guy in Australia, uh, no, Hawaii, and those are awesome as well, but I'm just trying these Brearley's out. Yeah. Um, yeah, just different combos, trying what, sure. you know, what's available, why not? Yeah, and I think more than anything, just that the decades of grease you got worked into this yeah. thing yeah, probably is affecting it more than... It's already you know. on its third refret, so, God. yeah. So. And those are bigger, fr your bigger frets. Yeah, medium jumbo, Yeah, maybe a yeah. little bigger, but I don't think too much. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not super huge, but bigger than, certainly than the 55, bigger than mm -hmm. it came with. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can you remember back what, what it was like when you did it have the original frets back? It, when you got I it? mean, I th yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure it was never refretted wow. um, before I got it. I mean, all that neck wear, that wasn't there. That's wow. just for me grinding away the, yeah. you know, the lacquer on the, on the neck or the yeah. finish or whatever. That's too cool. Okay, yeah. two very cool guitars. Let's talk about these two very cool amps yeah. back here. Yeah. All right, so a good buddy of mine, Sean Patton, he used to run a company called Emperor. You know, Emperor Cabinets, I'm sure you're familiar yeah, with Yeah, I've, I've heard of them. Sure. So now he split from those guys, um, and he had, now has a company called Tyrant. And I've been primarily familiar with his cabinets. I bought one of his cabinets. They're, they're fantastic. They're great. Very great cabinets. Um, but he started uh, making heads, too. Okay. And so what we have, they're both 100 watts. I've got a couple of tubes pulled out to kind of bring them down more to the 50, 60-ish sure. area. Um, this yeah. bottom one for my backup, it's more like a JCM 800. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of got a little frizzle on it, yeah. you know, like a little crispiness. Sure. Where this is more um, Model T, Sun Model T, and uh, high watt. Yeah. So it's a little cleaner, even though the, already it's like, oh, that's your clean sound is pretty warm. But yeah. Yeah. Just back off on the guitar, he cleans it up a little bit more. But. Sure. Yeah. Man, I love the cabinet, too. It's just such a great, looks like your great-grandfather's radio. Totally, you know? totally. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna start getting into, you know, other builds like combos, I think he's even talking about. So, okay. yeah, it's, the cosmetically, yeah, they're beautiful. Northern California guy, Well, he or? was in Chicago, oh. but now he's in Austin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So that's where he's at. And the cab, 412, 412, right? yeah, and it's all, there's no splitting, that's just a cosmetic oh, kind, okay. of, kind of thing again. Um, and right now he's using WGS speakers. Mm. That's his go-to. Okay, I'm not I'm not familiar with those. Me but neither. It sounds great. Yeah, it, it sounds good. I know the one that I have that I got from him has Weber's in it. Oh, okay. And I'm a fan of Weber's speakers. Yeah. But yeah. I think he's uh, he's trying something else out. Sure. Uh, so this one is the backup, or do you just switch them when you feel like it? Ah, uh, backup. I yeah. mean, I tried them both out, and I'm partial to this sound a little yeah. bit more. It's. Uh, it's just the mids are a lot more up front and warmer. Yeah. You know, this is a little like, like I said, like frizzier or yeah. something. Like, but which is good. But I kind of I want like a more robust round. Sure. Kind of sound. Yeah, I think there's two philosophies on on like backup gear. One is like try and get an absolute duplication, so it's not at all this, so there's no difference. And the other thing is like have a slightly different flavor. So if you end up on that, it's like well. That's yeah. kind of a cool... Throw yourself a curveball. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really have the yeah. choice. This was just the two that he had available. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, 
He's being kind enough to let us take these out and just have these on stage so people can see them. Oh, great. Well, so God, beggars sound. can't be cho choosing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but no, they're amazing. Yeah. I'm, I am 100% uh, behind what he does. I, lo I love his gear. I love his amps. Great. Well, it sounds great. And more importantly, it looks great. It looks fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Well, hey, let's uh, talk about this humble pedal board. Okay. And it's 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 funny, man. You get a lot of sounds, but it's a fairly modest pedal board. Yeah, I've I've always been pretty simple when it comes to pedals, like wah, overdrive, treble booster, delay, and that's it. Sure. This is actually branching out for me. Okay. Um, well, cool. Well, let's start with you're running a cable, and what cables do you use? I'm like? using rattlesnake cables. Okay. Um, Boy, that's like, a out thick... of Montana, they're fantastic. Really? Yeah. My High... home state, Montana. Oh, I love Montana. Yeah. Mon. Cool. Um, yeah, great cables. Big ass rattlesnake straight into that polytune, looks yeah. like. And that's nice. Um, the polytune, it works great. Small. It, that's what I need because this is a small board, so the yeah. less space taken up is the best it, for me. And is that a Voodoo Labs pedal power supplying the juice for all these? I think, no, this is a pedal train. Okay, pedal train. Oh, okay, yeah. I reckon. They're proprietary right. power, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. That's that one. Cool, okay, great. Um, okay, so I'm going right in. From the Polytune. Polytune into a Caesar Diaz Texas Ranger. Oh, cool. What's that do? It's a treble booster. Uh, buddy a long time ago said, you've never tried a treble booster? I'm like, no. So he's, so I went ahead and just on a whim, bought this one out of the Fender catalog. Um, and it's my favorite treble booster. Cool, so, let's, let's hear it in context. Like, yeah. the, with that, do you usually use it by, like, like from, from your clean platform uh, or like combine it with, with other pedals? I do both. I'll use it on its own and in combo with the, the overdrive pedal okay. down here. So, so that's clean. It likes it likes tube amplifiers. Yeah. It likes to take a, a tube amp that's already kind of warm. Sure. Pushes it that much further. It's just creamy sustain. Right. And Over really there. warm. I mean, that's yeah. The treble boosters I've heard before. What I don't like about them is they boost the treble. Yeah. Check this <laughs> out. So I can do that with that. darker sound sure I love the rotary that's great just yeah. that way you get right to it yeah you know, whatever um, another company that I really like their treble booster is Brad Davis's uh, creepy fingers oh I haven't oh heard great of he plays bass in Fu Manchu <laughs> and he makes amazing fuzz and just overdrive all that kind of good stuff cool um, yeah his sugar boost is another one that I like that's the pedal I probably have most of or that the style of pedal I have most of are treble boosters huh. Cool. I love treble boosters. Yeah, okay, well that sounds fabulous. So that's the, so Polytune DS treble booster, and then what's next? So we got down here is this Arby's pedal. Um, <laughs> like the restaurant. Exactly like the restaurant. <laughs> okay. So I've used to use a TS9 tube screamer and then a hot cake, uh, the Crowther Audio hot cake from New Zealand. That kicked the TS9 off of my boards. Sure. And then I started playing this and it's just, there's, it's like the same to me as the hotcake, but it's just what's on my board right now. I yeah. have the hotcake as a backup in my pedal uh, sure. case. But this is a really nice overdrive. Um, it's kind of clean boost. It's got mid uh, boost all over the place. It's, here, I'll just play. <laughs> Bring it a little bit closer to, uh, you know. Sure, yeah, saturation. Arby's, it's beefy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I guess that's what they get to. <laughs> it's got these, um, these switches, like mid kind of boost. I'm adding a lot of mid. 
heads in there. Yeah. Do you uh, do you find you just set it and forget it, or do you tweak as you go? Um, I mean, from night to night with with all, everything, amps included, it depends on the room stuff's getting adjusted, but it doesn't move around too much. Everything's like 12 o'clock with the yeah with the level and then the overdrive and treble stays up and bass is a little down. Yeah. But yeah, usually it's. It's pretty much the same. Maybe yeah. slight tweaks. Hey, bit of a okay, bit of a change of subject to non sequitur. But you, do you always play without a pick? No, I play with a pick right now. But yeah. I, I like to at home. I usually never play with a pick. Yeah. I like my fingers, and I do a lot of hybrid picking when we play. Huh? And when you are playing with a pick, what do you what do you use? I use. Uh, so I got my own custom pick from Dunlop, but oh, it's cool. it's like a Tortex eighty eight, the yeah. green one. Oh, good. Um, Which we, yeah. yeah, but instead of green, it's a much cooler. Yeah. There is none blacker. There's yeah. none blacker with <laughs> none more abalone here. Yeah, that's great. Abalone, balloon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So from the Arby's, where are we going? Okay, so now this is one of my favorite pedals as well. Um, this is my custom fuzz uh, pedal called the Seaweed Fuzz. Seaweed fuzz. Um, my buddy Tim Brennan in Brisbane, Australia, he has a great guitar shop. He's an amazing amp builder. He's an amazing pedal builder. And he's like, let's do, let's make you a custom fuzz pedal. And I'm like, okay, I can't yeah, say no to that. Sure. Like just the, the nicest thing, you know, like in the music world, like someone approached me to do something like right. that. I was like, oh, that was very, very awesome. Um, what, so what were you using prior to this? What was there like a something that that was kind of a uh, template for your sound? Or? No, I've so what's going on in here? It's a big muff circuit, a triangle big muff circuit, and um, a color sound like tone boost. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what the combo is. Um, I've never really been a fan of big muffs whatsoever, and Tim makes probably the best. Big big muff copies available, and he just kept trying to force feed me him. You know, try this one, try this one. So, when we Earthless did our record from the ages, I used quite extensively on that record a Civil War era big muff, um, and I loved it. And so then I also tried out a Triangle big muff after that recording, and I I loved it. And so we decided to make. Um, the, the seaweed fuzz with the triangle primarily being, you know, the main one that I use. Cool. The main circuit. But the thing is that he's like, it's not a big muff anymore because there's this mids boost switch. Oh, okay. So I keep that on all the time and it's just all that mid scoop that you get from a big muff yeah. that's filled, the holes filled now. Oh, that makes sense. And yeah. he's like, it's not a big muff anymore. Well, I like it. So yeah. I, it's a bastardized uh, triangle. Yeah. Big muff. Cool. Well, let's hear, uh, let's hear it when you really unleash hell on this thing. <laughs> the traditional right there yeah. with that mids boost off. God, that sounds killer, man. It's gnarly. So if you're playing it like first without <laughs> to have that color change right there. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, it feels I like, like you get that. a little more compression too. It's yeah, totally. Yeah, in fact, I'm not even sure it's getting louder. It's just it's just it's filling it's filling the hole. Yeah, yeah. The negative yeah. times the negative is positive. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Stand and deliver. Yeah, well that's that's cool. So from there, what do we hit? Um, then you go to the Crybaby Mini. Love the Mini, right? Five thirty-five Q. Yeah. Um, also from Dunlop, I've used. Um, 
the Hendrix Mini, which is fantastic. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I know I use all of them, but this one's great because it's it, it's very uh, you know got all the control in it, and it's not cool. taking up valuable real that's, estate that's on your board. That's the main thing for yeah. sure. But so I mean, like, yeah. Works great. Yeah. Okay, that sounds no great. No complaints. All right, cool. So from there, are you hitting this Echo Drive? Yes. What is that big thing? Okay, this is a good buddy, a couple of good buddies of mine from San Diego's company uh, called SIB Electronics. Mm. And they make, I think, some of the greatest pedals out there, and I have pretty much all of them. And they come and go off of the board, but this one is a mainstay. Um, it's a 12AX7 driven oh. um, delay. Um, well, it's, I don't know, let's see, it's got a, a huge different kind of delay range, so if we're going, turn you off. Wow. It's, sorry, it's kind of sloppy right. explanation, but it's very, very long. Yeah, the swap is part of the fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's cool. And what is the drone thing? Okay, doing? so the drone, you got a switch here. So like an Echoplex, which is the EP3 Echoplexes, that's what I love using, but sure. can't bring them on the road all the time. Yeah. Um, this drone, it acts as if the tape is kind of running away and feedbacking on itself. Oh, so cool. the record level, that's the same kind of idea as, yeah. as those Echoplexes. Um, so you can just do this. Maybe it works better with the Do you want me to note. hold it? You, I'll pull, do you play? Or, uh... kind of yeah. get the feedback going and then mess with the speed. That's great. He has an expression pedal, so you can mess with the speed there. That's too cool. My favorite sci-fi is a sci-fi from, sci from the 60s, and that totally nails that. Uh, <laughs> the Echo, that's the, yeah, like that the Star, Star Trek era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an amazing sound, those delays feeding back on each other. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's great. Just, and the tube, I don't know, I mean... It's really nice. Yeah, I think we can, I don't know, I think that stuff really, I think you actually do hear it. There's Totally, yeah. I, I think so. Um, yeah. And also, I mean, it... Oh, that slapback's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, it boosts, so... It's got a nice little preamp going yeah. down. Um, it's got, here, I'll go back over here. It's got the spillover mod, so if you turn it off, it'll decay. Oh, yeah. Or you can do it so it's hard. Cold cut, yeah. And then, or with one delay. And then it's off. Oh, that's great. So I use the spillover and let it gradually do its thing and take, sure. you know, decay out. Yeah, because, I mean, you're carrying a lot of sonic space in this band. So I bet things like that when you can just trip mm. out and have it get huge. Totally, yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, that's a very helpful tool. Yeah. That's, that one is used all the time. Yeah, hit the drone, walk off the stage, have a smoke and a drink, yeah. come back, <laughs> still going. Totally. Great, <laughs> yeah, okay. And then the last ingredient. Okay, the Flint Strymon. I primarily got it because it has such a good harmonic tremolo sounding circuit. Yeah. So. Like the old band masters, I have a sure. 62, so it's like that's my favorite terminal circuit. So that's why I got it primarily. And you know, that sounds very analog for mm. being so. I yeah. mean, you, you think of Strymon as, as a pristine yeah, uh, totally. work, but man, that sounds very analog and funky. Yeah, that's great. It's beautiful. And then in tow with it, it has a really nice reverb. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's great they have that independence too, so you can yeah. just get the verb. And do you run the verb pretty often with it, or uh... the verb is kind of on all the time? Yeah, and, I bet. And, yeah. yeah, it's it's nice. Yeah, 60s, 70s, 80s. I keep it on the 60s. And sure. The tremolo. It's got you know the it's the harmonic that I use, and then it's got more of the optical. <laughs> Vibe Hendrix. -y. Yeah, so. it's funny. We just uh, did a rundown on Trower last week. Oh, nice. And he had, uh, God, what was it? He had the full tone. Um, yeah, uh, those thing. are great. Yeah, which is great. Uh, but he just, I mean, that dude just sounds great. He's just, anything he plays. Yeah, anything sure. he plays. Yeah, he's going to sound like that. Yeah. He, yeah he, that's, the, that's the trick with everybody. They yeah. give them anything, they're going to sound like themselves. He could have a squire plugged into a bandit, and it's going to yeah. sound. Yeah, it's going to totally. be great. Yeah. Well, man, that's great. Uh, love the tones. Love the band. Congrats on Thank everything. You so much. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're going to Appreciate talk to your it. bass player and uh, go from there. Cheers. Cheers. Whoa, Mike. This is Mike Eggington, the bassist for Earthless. Mike, that sounds killer, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> and that that uh, that uh, bass is fabulous. I haven't seen one of these forever. Is it a new Armstrong or no, one of the old uh, ones? 1970. Oh, yeah, great, yeah. man. So yeah. let's hear all about it. Um, I don't know. I came across it. Um, Knoll Valley up in Northern California. Like how yeah, long ago? Maybe two years ago. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Is now is the neck shorter? Or is that just the illusion of that small yeah, headstock? It is a little bit shorter than a regular scale bass. But it sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. huge. Man. Yeah, the pickup's kind of ridiculous in this thing. God. <laughs> Before this, what were you playing? What was your primary bass? Uh, Rickenbackers. Oh, okay. And then, um, I used to uh, I'd switch out the pickups for Seymour uh, Duncan P bass pickups in oh, the Rick to get really? a more like rounder sound. Huh? Yeah. Did you take the cover off um, the you know that 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 awkward Rick cover. Yeah, yeah, I took it yeah. out and took the Rick of sound out and all that stuff huh. and just, just put the one pickup in. And it evolved into now playing this one. Is yeah, this your yeah. number one all yeah, the time? Yeah, yeah. Do you is. tour with a backup as well? Uh, sometimes, not on this tour, though. Yeah. <laughs> just God. kind of trying to open Fearless. for luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you break a string, you play around yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. great, man. Yeah. Okay, well, that is very cool. And Thanks. have you done what all have you had to do to it? Uh, nothing. This is all stock. Jeez, pretty much. Man. Yeah, I got love your strap lock. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's great. What strings do you run on it? Um, they're just the flat wound, um, oh. the Dario. Do you, do you ever change them? I guess if uh, maybe once every three or four months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. High mileage in between the yeah, change. Sure. Yeah, yeah. God, it sounds fabulous. Well, okay. Thanks. Well, that's great. Well, then, and again, part of the whole classic setup. Tell me about your amp a little bit. Um, the Acoustics 370. It's uh, our buddy Sean Patton who does Tyrant Tone um, yeah. speakers and sure. And, yeah, Isaiah. What Isaiah uses. Yeah. He just uh, loaned that to me for the tour. What? So, you know what year it is? I don't. I don't. He didn't say. It's so clearly it's, a vintage. Yeah, yeah. it's a 70s. I'm yeah, assuming. 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. And the sun is a, ba a backup? That's, yeah, that's the backup. Yeah, yeah. yeah I haven't had to use it redundancy. Yet, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if you leave it at home, you will need it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Those, that's the rule of the universe. Sure. And what is that cabinet you're running into? Uh, it's a Tyrant 412 cabinet. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. It's tall and skinny enough where I thought it was like an 810. Yeah, or yeah. Yeah. So. Do you know what speakers you're running? I, I don't know what he put in this one hmm. particularly. And you're micing it, not running a direct out as there well. There is a DI as well. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. kind of so combine. Blend the two, yeah, the dirty with the with the clean and the yeah. on the board. So cut it sounds just massive. I mean, yeah, I thanks. wish that you people out there in internet land could actually stand in front of it. <laughs> it's like I can feel my pants shaking with every note, which <laughs> probably is a good segue into your pedal board where mm -hmm. some of that shake uh, is coming from. Yeah. Uh, and by pedal board, I mean there's no board. It's just a four pedals on the ground. Very simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it looks like you've got a one spot supplying the juice mm -hmm. and you're starting with this Boss uh, TU3. Yep. And then running into, what is this? It's a Black Arts uh, Tone Works Black Sheet pedal. Oh, okay. Just a distortion, semi-fuzz pedal. 
L let's hear like the clean tone and then go into the uh, I mean, they're both massive tones. Do you switch regularly or do you live in one more I, than I, the other? I live in the black sheet, basically. Really? Yeah, well, yeah. I bet it's just because in a three piece, you're covering up so much sonic territory. Yeah, I'm trying to fill the sound while he's is soloing a little yeah. bit, you know? Yeah, there's, so. it's, it's weird, man. You hit those low notes like that and there's this polyphonic mm. thing. Uh, so whatever it is, man, it yeah. really works. It's, it's primarily a guitar pedal but I just kind of roll everything off so it doesn't get too out of hand and yeah. it seems to cut through enough and not lose too much of the low end. Great you know, so, fit. Yeah. And then next you've got the mini wah. Yeah, mini bass wah. Yeah. Let's uh, hear that thing. Sure. It kind of works best. Yeah, yeah, the, sure. That's subtle. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a little like a sledgehammer. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then the phase 100. Yeah. On the yeah, end. yeah. Yeah, we so, just used those two pedals. New song on the record. Used okay. them in the studio, so figured sure. incorporate into the live set too. Let's so, hear that weirdo. Yeah. And that's how they record the Stranger Things uh, soundtrack, <laughs> apparently. That right there. Yeah, classic phaser. Yeah, that's great, man. And do you, and do you usually keep it on that low Van Halen yeah, setting? Yeah, 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 definitely. yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a sweet yeah, spot. Just a slow, slow sweep. Right. Well, man, pleasure to meet you. Congrats. Yeah, oh, one more thing before I forget. What picks are you using? Oh, Dunlop. Yeah, the Dunlop. 88s. Yeah, there's nylon. Yeah, the nylon. Yeah, is it point eighty eight? Eighty eight. Yeah. And you usually play with a pick. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for a little Driving more attack. It. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, great, man. Well, hey, congrats. Cool. Love the band. Man, Thanks Thank so much for so joining us. Yeah, man. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the latest rig rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new rig rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to premierguitar.com forward slash rig rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.